Q&A again. Why do you think we have six primary terminals and a pad-mounted transformer? Just looking at the photo, we have six terminals for the high voltage side. Just remember, this is a high voltage side, okay? Let's see the answers here. First one is from Ericsson Louis. He says that these three phase, three terminals, each for high side and low side. Uh, that could be the answer, but uh, not really the right one that we're looking for since we all know that this is just a primary side. Parallel runs, uh, not really, by Taj Q89, MRD318, paralleling, so you can use smaller wires. Uh, nope, that's not the answer. Grand Handler 324, it's loop fed to be able to be powered by two separate medium voltage circuits. Mm, yes, actually, that's the uh, right answer that we're looking for. So, Grand Hunter has some. I, th I think I have visited this account and he's really some, have some great experience regarding this in the high voltage circuits. So, yeah, thanks, Grant. And then Drew528, voltage is higher on one side than the other. Uh, not really, it's like the same answer by others. Card 441, in and out supplies. Uh, it's a bit general to say that, uh, but if he meant that it's in and out for a loop feed system, then it's okay, that's fine. And Adam Stewart, three phase input, the three phase output. Uh, output and yeah, it's a bit too general, like card 441 answer. But if he meant, if he meant for, uh, if he meant it for a loop feed system, then it's okay. Uh, many yo eight two feeds coming in or a loop feed. So yeah, I've got to comment many yo eight. So yeah, loop feed. That's right. And then Mat Matilda, why? So he's just asking us why. So let's check the answer. Okay, this is the answer. We've got two types of pad mounted transformer. One is the radial feed and one is the loop feed. If we could look at that the radial feed, we only have three high voltage bushings, like for this one here. And then for loop feed, we have six high voltage bushings. So if we meant by loop feed, it's really meant to be, this is the input here, and then going to the next loop, right? If it's for a radial system, then it's just going here, just one way, one way here. And then for this one, then it's in and then out, like looping inside the transformer. So let's check any ideas regarding this. Like for this one, this is one example that I have in one of my projects. So we have a 34.5 kV uh, input to growing here. Let's see, it's just going here and then looping inside a transformer, going out and then looping again inside. And then we have reached a dead end, it's a dead end. And just to say so, if we have a dead end, we're required to install a surge arrestor here. That's a surge arrestor. Don't worry, we're going to discuss this later on. For this one, let's have the radial feed first. Of course, this pick coming from Ray Grant Hunter, uh, as I said, uh, he has a great experience about this. If we have a radial feed, we only have one source here. One source, okay? And that's it. We only have one source, so look at that, one source here. So we have only three terminals. Three terminals there, or bushing, right? And to give you some knowledge about this on the Padman transformer, we can have here the high voltage compartment here, protected by a barrier here, and then a low voltage compartment. For the high voltage, we can either have the uh, six or three bushings, while for the low voltage, we could only have uh, one feed here, so only one. So right for this one, is like ABC here, ABC and neutral, okay? Uh, I think they, it's A, B, C and neutral, depending on the color coding, of course. So checking out, that's the bayonet fusing. Bayonet fusing. 
uh, to give you a for pole mounted transformer in overhead systems we have power fuse and fuse cutouts but for pad mounted transformers that's what we use off most often it's either current limiting uh, fuses or uh, what you call this bayonet fuse we just insert that in there mm. This is a great this is a great topic, you know. And just to comment Grant Hunter, thanks thanks for your uh, graphic there. Yeah, I know it's your uh, uh we have got switch open here. Uh, yeah, we're doing great. Now for this one we got the loop feed here. And then for the loop feed, I would like to commend High Power Energy LLC for this photo. Great work, man. I've visited your page. He's a president and CEO of the high power energy llc so i don't know just great great installation here and when we say a loop feed here just looking at the single line diagram here we've got a single line here oops sorry there's a single line diagram here showing us uh if we've got the incoming source here okay oops some minor bug there incoming source here and then it's going to loop inside the transformer and then going out again so it's just looping inside of it and supplying the secondary load here just the same here so for loop feed we have a choice if we can have the one side uh, as the supply or the one side you can have both depending on the type of the system that you're working on so for example here there's the input of that and then looping inside the transformer going out okay just to give you some uh, knowledge about pad mounted transformer the one that you see here oh, the one that you see here that one that's the uh, switch wherein you can select either of the two sources, okay? That's the switch. This is a loop switch. Loop switch. Either I can choose source A or source B. It's up to you. Uh, some may also allow the uh, running of the whole transformer from the two sources. And for the low voltage side, we've got the... Uh, we've got the... To call this only one loop I uh, one feed only so that's a great looking at the color it's a 480 wide 277 volts I think so yeah now what happens if we have a loop feed type pad mounted transformer with a dead end like for in this case okay we got a dead end here so the dead end like let's look at here we have the source here but the problem is we have a dead end uh, wherein this is going to be open. So one tip there is to put a elbow arrestor here. That elbow arrestor will provide uh, surge protection against that. Uh, just to give you a sample here, this is it. This is the source here. And we don't know that it's looping here, but this second term this is second set of pushings here are open so what we needed to do is install a surge arrestor that's technically grounded here and for us to have an understanding of what an elbow arrestor so we'll discuss some of it okay now going back here we have a surge arrestor or an elbow arrestor for underground distribution systems it can also be park uh, park stand surge arresters depending on the type but the most common one is the elbow arrestor here so checking out the most common type of surge arrestor uh, material that we use is the metal oxide varistor uh, let me write that so that you'll have an idea there metal oxide varistor okay or mob you can do a search of that if you have any questions about that, you can ask me out later on. Metal oxide varistor has a, it's a semiconductor type of metal, wherein we have the resistance here. That's ohms resistance, right? And then we have the voltage here. So this is just a normal graph. Uh, at normal voltage, as you can see here, 
this is the normal level of voltage this is the normal voltage here normal voltage uh, system like say for example if we have a 35 kV system then that's their normal voltage you can have actually a maximum continuous over voltage for that which we will discuss later on um, thinking about this if we have a voltage say we have a 35 kV for example just an example for you to imagine guys now if we have a voltage of around let's say an over voltage let's say a lightning strike strike the struck the primary lines then we're going to have around a thousand kilovolts of surge there now if we have a thousand kilovolts the resistance of that MOV is going to get low so we have an inversely proportional uh, relationship between the resistance if we have a high voltage then we have low resistance if we have a low voltage then we have a high resistance okay so if we try to do that here okay let's say the normal voltage is a 35 kV supply here that's a normal supply for example provided by the distribution company uh, let's say let's say we're going to have a uh, normal voltage flowing into that coming from the source of course well this one since we have a voltage that's uh, around its rating as it's rated for then this will not operate no operation from that so just continue here so normally supply this is the normal condition here normal condition I'm sorry about that just play this video so how about if you have a surge let's say I have a lightning strike I'm going to strike this so lightning lightning then I'll supposed to have a around a thousand kilovolts let's say that's a huge number okay so if we have a thousand kilovolts most probably our elbow arrestor will operate the resistance of this will be technically very low shorting out the circuit so our light our surge instead of going here it will not go there so technically it will be shorted and diverted into ground that's the purpose of the ground there that's why the symbol of an elbow arrestor has a ground on it. Look at that. Okay. Going back to the picture. Yes. This one is grounded here. Look at that. This is a ground. Grounded here. Okay. So ground. Or earth. If you're European. Okay. So we're doing great now. Uh, just like to share you a bit more of it okay just a an addition for this uh let's say the normal rating of our system for example is a 34.5 or 35 kv system here so that's it it's a 34.5 kv i'm sorry about that okay mm. we'll see that for a four wire multi-grounded system we can have a 27 kv uh, just so you know, I got this from the Cooper Power System. Mm. If you want to check this, uh, it's a good time for you. It's a metal oxide varistor elbow arrestor. That's why it's called MOV. And then if we look at here, the system voltage is 34.5 kV. That's why the maximum continuous over voltage is 27 kV. Which is technically the one here, okay? That's the one here. 27 kV, 34.5. That's for a multi grounded neutral. So, in simplicity terms, uh, to make it simple, if you have a nominal voltage of face to face of 34.5 kV, and then we have an over voltage that's more than that's greater than 27 kV on the line to neutral or line to ground line to neutral or line to ground voltage then our elbow arrestor will surely operate that's why you need to know what's the maximum over voltage that 
uh, you can have in the system. Like for example, if you have faults in the system, like a single line to ground fault, double line to ground fault, you need to simulate those using a power system software, wherein you can actually see the over voltage that's going to be caused on one of the faces, because for surely that is going to make our uh, elbow arresters operate right so this one is a good over voltage system if you have any questions about this we can tackle this in the next upcoming videos or series we can make a video about this but for now uh, i think it's ready enough just to be a bit more short so thanks guys uh, i like what's happening here now